A consummate athlete seeks health, community, and adventure through movement. And here on the podcast, longtime endurance coach and kinesiologist Peter Glassford and author and cycling coach Molly Herford are helping you lead your best active, adventurous life. Every week, we talk with professional athletes, health and fitness experts, and of course, real life consummate athletes. We're excited to have you along for the ride. Hey, Peter. What does a registered kinesiologist and endurance coach do? Well, Molly, let me tell you, I work with busy people that want to do big, crazy adventures. You know, these are people who have kids, they have families, they have all sorts of work stuff they got to do, but they have big goals. They maybe want to do a big mountain bike race, 100 miler, something like Dirty Kanza. They might just want to keep up on the group ride. And all these things are really, really cool adventures and really good breaks from all the other stuff we have going on in our, in our busy lives, right? So I help people do that. And so I really like programming and finding ways that we can fit movement into their lives. Sometimes that involves, you know, consultation around movement or trying to work through some sort of injury. Uh, and sometimes it's just dealing with, you know, fitting stuff in and getting the work done. So that's what I do. I, I coach and I build training plans and, you know, that's that's what a registered kinesiologist and endurance coach does in my case. And how can people get in touch with you if they're interested in, in well, chatting with you? You're on the Consummate Athlete podcast. You go to consummateathlete.com. You can find coaching links on that website. Awesome. Thanks, Peter. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, so, Peter, what's shaking? Not too much. We're, uh, you know, doing a bit more hiking and running these days, I think. And, you know, just trying to stick with it here, get through the summer, keep the grind going, staying healthy. Tell you what, my legs are so tired right now. Mm-hmm. Um, big run week last week. Um, I guess by the time anyone's hearing this, I will hopefully be recovered, but I feel like I'm actually going to be saying I'm more tired. Um, yeah, you're putting a lot of time on feet. A lot of time on feet. Um, it's been, It's been awesome. I've been really psyched to finally be getting out more on the trails. We've actually, I feel like, sort of figured out a system now because, so for, for those of you listening who don't know, Peter and I share one, one car now. So while that's great, we also live like 10K from trails, basically. Um, so it does make kind of organizing where both of us are, are getting out and getting our workouts in on trail a little bit more, you know, just difficult as far as like scheduling goes but i feel like we've actually like figured out this good like drop setup lately where i feel like i'm getting out on trails a lot more than i normally do Mm -hmm. yeah which is definitely the struggle i've been having a lot of clients this past month i would say right where it's this always this gamble or not gamble but trade-off i guess between do you drive to the trails do you drive to the hills do you drive to the quieter roads you know the roads you can do intervals on the roads you can ride steady on or do you ride from home, you know, where there's maybe stoplights or, or not trails, right? Like you, when we run from here, we have nice town trails, but they're like p- pancake flat and, you know, gravel. Yeah, which I mean, I love for intervals and for just like easy runs, but they're not really great for when your run is supposed to be 17 miles on trail. Yeah, or, or if the intervals were meant to be like a, a domain specific, like most of the domain specific for ultra running would be uphill running in a lot of ways right yes very unfortunately um Um, so what i've i've kind of come to realize is the point to point is actually pretty awesome if i get dropped you know the few k from from our place like at the trails it gives me an extra you know six miles of trail and sure i do have to you know hit some road to run home um, but that way I'm kind of avoiding dri- it's it's like this weird compromise of I'm not totally driving to and from right um, just getting dropped off on on the way out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah that's been kind of an interesting thing but speaking of uh, of tired legs um, our, our guest today has ridden a hundred miles every day in the month of July um, all to raise money for for the the cancer fighting society leave it on the road um, so Anthony Costa, uh, new, fellow New Jersey native, I was very excited when I realized we shared an area code. Um, yeah, every day of July, a hundred miles, um, just such a ridiculous amount of riding. Like I thought we did a lot of riding in February when we were in Spain riding at the endurance cycling camps, but it pales in comparison. Yeah. It's a crazy challenge. Yeah. This is not to say that everyone in the world should go out and ride 100 miles a day for 30 days. Um, But it is just kind of a really interesting idea of like figuring out what's going to make you excited and motivated and and make you you go right now. Yeah. And I mean, I think this is maybe in lieu of 
you know, some of these things like the ride across the country for cancer rides or, or some of these big challenges that people do, right? Yeah, I guess like doing, you know, race across America would be fairly similar. Sure, or yeah, like I say, there's lots of like, we have a coast to coast for cancer ride. We have different things like that. There's people who ride like with the Tour de France course, right? As, as you know, quote unquote, normal people, right? So it takes them, I mean, the Tour de France takes 21 days in any case, right? So even 21 days of big burly days like that is pretty big. So, I mean, it's, it's cool. People are still finding motivations to do this. And if it can benefit, you know, a charity or cancer, that's, that's even better. Um, I think one thing that I saw recently was BC bike race did 20 K a day for seven, seven days. So it was like a week, just like BC bike race. Um, and, and I thought that was great. Like, and, and you, most people were doing it as mountain biking, right? So in most places, like it's a pretty big deal. Like none of those rides are epic. But to do seven days in a row for a lot of people, the the frequency, the consistency that I'm always harping on is is pretty like neat. It's going to be hard logistically. Um, it's going to be more mountain biking than most people are used to doing. So I thought that was a great step down, maybe <laughs> from 100 miles a day. Yep, if you're a not bit, so a little bit more of a relaxing goal. I, I or know you're a, a ma- or you're an off road person, right? Yeah, I know a lot of us can't really fit 100 miles a day into our you know, daily, daily work live. So, Mm -hmm. but there's so much to be learned, I think. And this is where the episode goes into is, you know, all those problems, like you're going to get saddle sores when you do too much, you know, you're going to get a bit of knee pain, maybe or back pain or just fatigue, as you say, right. So seeing what happens to these extremes often will help us inform as we're trying to step into, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more extreme than our usual. Yeah, exactly. I think there's just there's so many good lessons that can can come out of that. So, yeah, really excited to to get to chat with Anthony and sort of hear how someone goes about doing that. Um, and we will also maybe throw out that if you are thinking about planning for a big crazy goal or big scary goal like this, um, a three month training plan or coaching consult can probably help you figure out how to do that. Uh, you know, maybe a little a little smarter. And you can find all of our intel on that over at consummateathlete.com slash coaching. Uh, yeah, so I think that's that's all we have for this week. Enjoy this episode with Anthony Costa. Welcome to the Consummate Athlete Podcast, Anthony. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yeah. Well, first of all, happy belated birthday. Um, how did you how did you celebrate the day yesterday? <laughs> thanks. Um, uh, let's see, we uh, I went over to my um, my parents' house, and you know, we just kind of ordered some food and hung out, and yeah, it, it it wasn't bad. It was it was it was nice to do almost nothing. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> and just hang out with some family and eat some food, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, and later I want to get into exactly how much food you've been eating. But for for the audience who who probably doesn't know this yet, um, unless I mean they would have heard the intro, but. A hundred miles a day every day in July, and we're in the final days. How's it going? Yeah, um, it's it's going a lot better now than it was in the beginning. That's for sure. Really? Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it, it's my body has kind of settled into a rhythm, I guess, and, and you know, just sort of uh, it, it's it's just sort of realize like okay I guess this is life now you know (laughs) (laughs) Um, but that first week was rough yeah um okay so first let's just get into why it is that you decided to do this I mean I you know talk a little bit about your your fundraiser and why a hundred miles for 31 days uh was a good idea (laughs) well that that's that's forever debatable, but, (laughs) but, um, uh, you know, it it started with, um, with my dad passing from cancer and, uh, you know, uh, I, I, since that, that very morning, I wanted to do something, you know, um, and I was struggling with what, and I guess uh, to, in an attempt to keep a long story short, you know, I I ran into Leave It on the Road uh, during my research. And I uh, was reading about, um, you know, the original adventure that started Leave It on the Road, which was a cross-country ride. Um, so the 
initial plan actually was to do something like that, like actually ride across the country. But then, you know, the whole COVID thing and uh, that just seemed like a bad idea. So, um, so yeah, you know, I guess uh, I, I reached out to leave it on the road and, and they kind of took me under their wing and I decided to turn it into a century every day for the month. Um, just basically with the hope that that was like crazy enough to attract some attention to it. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's like, I, I wanted to do something to fight back and I, I wanted to, to be able to say, you know, I did something to maybe help save somebody else and help their family. Um, not have the the suffering that ours did. Uh, so, you know, it, it's it all stemmed from from my dad, you know, and his fight with cancer and his unfortunate losing uh, the fight. But um, and it turned into this just overwhelming desire to do something about it. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, and how. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this, but how much of you, how much of your time has this been cathartic for you? Like as you're riding, are you thinking about your dad? Are you thinking about leave it on the road? Um, you know, how, how has that been? It's been interesting. Uh, it's been interesting. You know, I, I've been of course thinking a lot and, and, uh, yeah, you know, thinking about my dad a lot and, it's led to some really heavy moments, you know, like almost breaking down on the side of the road. And, and it's, uh, you know, that's, that's sort of added to the challenge, but, uh, yeah, you know, it, it, I guess you could say it's been, um, almost like therapy <laughs> in itself, uh, just, you know, pushing the pedals and, and putting, uh, putting the emotions into, you know, propelling me forward. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just, no, it's, it's, it's super to tough. Thoughts, yeah. Really. <laughs> uh, that's fair. I'm actually pretty amazed that you can formulate a single sentence right now. Um, <laughs> you know, you're, you're how many miles in 2,800 at this point? Um, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Now, do you think it would have been easier if you had been going across the country or is this, you know, you have your home base set up, is that easier? I, I feel like I could make the argument for both ways. You probably could, yeah. Um, I I want to say that the home base is probably easier, although I can't really speak for riding across the country since I've never done it. Um, but, you know, the... I, I was, somebody was telling me, I never actually checked up on this, but somebody was telling me like the Southwest was having some pretty gnarly temperatures. Um, and part of my route had me going that way. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that true. Probably would have been difficult. Although uh, so, my, you know. my argument for home being harder though, is just going to be that when you're on the road doing a cross country trip for a month, I think there's no expectations of you to be doing anything other than like riding and existing. But when you're, you know, getting right. home every day and you've had like, say like a normal, it's almost like a nine to five, uh, except that you're yeah. pedaling the entire time. There's still expectations yeah. on you, I think, when you get home to exist as like a normal human. Like you, you know, had, even though it's a fun thing, you still had to go to a family thing last night and like do that and be a functioning person instead of just, you know, passing out in a, you know, box of Chinese food, <laughs> which is what I do after most <laughs> centuries, if I'm being totally honest. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I think you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. I didn't think about that, but um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, fortunately, my family's been ridiculously supportive, um, and you know, I, I come home and I, I try to help out, but yeah, I'm just I'm just done. So it's uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's uh, I do what I can, but unfortunately, it's not much. 
Um, so yeah, my, my family's been, uh, huge through all of this and, and kind of like taking up the slack where, where I can't really <laughs> do what I should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. Um, okay. Yeah. So you said it's easier now. What was like the first week? Like where, where did you, where did the tipping point go from like, we, this is super fun and I'm doing this really cool thing that I'm super proud of to, Oh God, what am I doing? Uh, that pretty much happened the first day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, um, the, yeah, the first day I went over, uh, I, I did 111 miles and, um, you know, those last 11 miles were just went by so slow, but, uh, you know, I went into this, like I, I had ridden centuries in the past and, you know, I've, I've done, I had done eight hour days in the saddle and all that stuff, but obviously never back to back. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, I, I guess I was just like, it, it, I was actually talking to a friend about it the other day, but it's sort of the power of ignorance is bliss, you know? So I, I went into this um, sort of not knowing how it was going to be. Uh, but yeah, that first day, it, it realized like, oh, man, this is going to be a long month. <laughs> you know, uh, the, 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 the pains and stuff like that, just kind of like everything hurt. And then it slowly got better after that. Yeah. Um, so what, now that you're like pretty dialed in four weeks later, what does, what's like the optimal day look like from day to day here? Walk me through. And I want to hear sure. everything. So, like, what uh, are you eating? What What are you putting on the bike as far as like nutrition goes? What are you wearing? Just give me everything. Okay. So um, let's see. Alarm goes off at quarter to four in the morning. <laughs> Oh, I'm already upset about this. <laughs> uh, and it starts with uh, a big bowl of oatmeal. Um, I'm making, uh, you know, a pot of oatmeal every morning and usually putting a mixture of like nuts and fruits and, and uh, you know, a little drizzle of syrup in there um, to get started. As far as... Uh, you know, getting ready for the ride, um, leave it on the road and already had a, uh, relationship with Rafa, which, uh, they were, uh, super, super kind to, to pass on to me. So Rafa has been really helpful and getting me kitted out for this. Um, so, you know, uh, it's, uh, after breakfast, I'm rubbing a ton of chamois cream into the shorts. <laughs> I was going to ask about uh, that, so I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, as uh, as far as the bike setup goes, you know, I've got um, I've got a, a handlebar bag with all the nutrition. I've got a, like a, a top tube bag where I keep my phone and my camera and all that stuff. Uh, I have a hydration pack with, you know, tools and, and um I have a little like, you know, basic first aid kit in there. Uh, I keep a little mini tripod too, because uh, I'm documenting everything every day. So I'll stop and set up the tripod and take a picture and, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Um, How do you manage to do that? Because I can't even do that on like a three hour ride. I'm just like, it's going to take too long. I need to get home. Um, so I'd imagine after a day <laughs> like two of a hundred mile day, how are you making yourself do that? Um, I, don't, I guess I feel obligated to. Fair enough. Know. Fair enough. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's, I've, you know, I, I've got, uh, I've got some support of a couple of brands. So I guess, you know, I, I just feel like I, you know, I got to keep the brands happy. I got to take a picture. You know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but usually it just, it starts, what's cool about waking up as early as I do and hitting the road as early as I do is I get to watch the sunrise every day. Um, and that just makes for awesome photos. You know, I, I 
ride through some wooded area or whatever and the way the light comes through the trees or something like that it's just like oh that would be a cool picture <laughs> um so it 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 doesn't it doesn't really it's not difficult uh, i guess to to motivate myself to set up the the little tripod and everything because it's i'm trying i'm already seeing something that i think looks cool um and i'm just trying to capture it uh, but I'm not really a great photographer, so I don't always succeed. <laughs> yep, but, yep. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, and have you had to uh, have you had to make any adjustments to your bike since you started this whole thing? Have you had to change saddles or change seat heights or change handlebars or anything like that? Um, there's been some changes. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, the the position was pretty dialed. Um, you know, the saddle is uh, a specialized saddle that I've been riding for years now. Um, but uh, I had to adjust the front end quite a bit. Um, I had it originally, compared to my road bikes, I had it set up a little bit more relaxed, thinking like, oh, you know, long day in the saddle, maybe a little bit more upright. Um, that was a huge hell no from my body. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to, you know, uh, drop everything down to match my road fit and, and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, mainly just, you know, adjusting the lever angles and things like that. I didn't really have to do a ton of stuff, just like lowering the stem, adjusting the bar angle, basically making my bike, uh, cause I'm riding a cross bike, uh, but making it as aggressive as I possibly could to mash my road fit. Um, and then my body was a little happier with that. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um, and if you're on a cross bike, what are you doing for tires? So I'm riding a uh, 30 C flicks um, on, uh, on the cross bike. Cause I figured, you know, we have the, the DNR canal and stuff like that. Yep. And, uh, you I know, know it well. I, I know it. it very well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a cool path. It's it's really nice. It goes all the way down to Princeton, as you know, and and uh, it's it's an easy out and back. Um, so I figured some some nice cushy <laughs> slick tires would allow me to be relatively efficient on the road, but still explore some of the. Uh, some of the unpaved stuff that uh, that New Jersey has to offer. Yeah, which I think a lot of people, I'm just going to like, this is going to turn into an ad for New Jersey here. People don't know how <laughs> nice New Jersey is for cycling, but it is actually fantastic. And that is the hill I'm willing to die on. <laughs> for sure. You know, it, it's funny because I've, I've been discovering all of these you know, little gems everywhere um, out by like Lamington and Tewksbury and Old Wick and, you know, kind of, and it's, you're, you almost question like, am I in New Jersey still? Is this, you know, because <laughs> uh, it's all farms. It's, it's all farms, you know, horse farms and stuff like that. It's really cool. Um, like, you know, I found this little, it's this one little hill that I find myself visiting almost every day, but um, it reminds me of like the last 10 minutes of the Shawshank Redemption uh, where, where, where Morgan Freeman's going through all those, you know, hay fields and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I, it, it, it looks like that. And sometimes I just stop and I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> where, where is this so, hill? So this is just north of Lamington. I forget the name. I'm actually going to pull up Google Maps right now on my laptop here. Oh, I love it. Um, yeah, so the, the DNR Canal, like that's where I did so much of my riding back when I was training for cross when I was at Rutgers and I was on the Rutgers cycling team. I right on. lived on that canal path. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like every day. So I feel like I actually, no, there have been times that I've ridden it like in pitch black with no lights. Like I knew it so well and I know it's pretty much flat, but there are some weird little spots. So. 
Yeah, totally. There's definitely, there's a couple of spots where there's some roots sticking out and stuff like that. Um, the, the old dams too, those yeah. are pretty edgy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, so much fun. So, uh, it's Black River Road in Lamington. I actually know where that is. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. I, I, I yep. agree. <laughs> <laughs> totally right so you know i i go up that little climb and there's it kind of hooks left and i sort of stop there sometimes and like yeah you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i love it uh okay so you're you're on the bike you've maybe taken your sunrise picture what's uh what are you eating on the bike are you stopping to refuel are you just living out of your saddlebag or your uh your bar bag or what's what's that look like so um I'm glad you brought that up because, yeah, it's a lot of how this ride is taking place is based around the pandemic. You know, uh, I, I carry all the food and water that I need for the duration of the ride. Um, I have yet to stop anywhere to take on anything. Um, so, it, it, you know, I, I kind of take this uh, really seriously. I don't want to potentially um, pass this on to anybody. You know, it's, it's, it's a really bad thing, but um, so anyway, I digress. <laughs> no, I think that's great. I think a lot of people, like, I think a lot of people are nervous to do big things like this, but I think with some preparation and, you know, just figuring out like what makes sense for you and like what you're, you're willing to do. Uh, and you know what you're comfortable with like i think you can still pretty you can take a you know what would have been a cross-country trip and actually figure out how to make it work and yeah you're not going cross-country and you're not getting to like you know stop at gronsky's and high bridge for an ice cream or whatever but right. you're still you're still getting out there yeah and it's really not that hard you know I, I, the the hydration pack i mean yeah it's a burden it sucks having something on your back for that long but you know, it carries two and a half liters of water and, and, and that's huge. You know, uh, I wouldn't be able to do this without the hydration. Pack. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's a big thing. Um, I have, uh, two water bottles on the bike that carry a liter each. So, you know, uh, but to answer your, your other question about what I'm eating, um, it's mostly just like store bought, you know, granola bars and stuff like that. Um, they're cheap. They're easy to find. I was just going to say at some like, point it's going to be expensive to be doing that many gels. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You know, and, and that's, um, I mean, nothing against sports nutrition because it's, it's fantastic and it works, but you're right. It's expensive. Um, so, you know, getting, uh, just getting calories in, in the form of like, um, I like those, um, uh, what should I call it? Like the fig bars. Um, like fig Newtons. You know, the, it's they're the, the, I guess they're the upscale fig Newton, <laughs> the, the nature bakery or whatever they're called. I don't know. Uh, but you know, there's those and, and the nature Valley bars and, you know, uh, all of those like oat based things. Um, that's, uh, my mom bought me pop tarts, which that, <laughs> yeah, cause, cause I was just like, I need something with lots of calories and she's like, here you go. Um, but, uh, you know, which <laughs> they, they kind of start to disintegrate after a while, <laughs> uh, but you know, Hey, it's, it's calories. So yeah, that's kind of what I've been eating. It's, it's just been, um, store-bought stuff really um, um so how how long is it to, oh and what are you doing for sunscreen are you reapplying during the day or are you just like hoping you don't end up super sunburned <laughs> uh i just kind of put a bunch on while i'm getting ready and hope for the best <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> So it's, I think I'm using SPF 50 um, and just kind of really layering it on. And yeah, so far, so good. Uh, I mean, I've got some pretty epic tan lines going right now. Yep. Yep. Um, Are you being like really <laughs> particular about your tan lines, like trying to make them perfectly crisp or have you just accepted that it'll be kind of ombre? 
Uh, for the leg gripper, I've been kind of picky about it, but for everywhere else, it's kind of whatever. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so the the leg gripper got the attention, but you know, as far as like the sleeves and stuff, it's it because the the jerseys I have are all different sleeve lengths anyway, so it would just be silly to try to match it up. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so how, what is your like average time on bike most days or has it like varied Around wildly? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it doesn't really vary wildly. I mean, it did in the beginning. Uh, the first ride was well over the eight hour mark. Um, you know, again, going back to like, what the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> um, but uh, but those numbers started creeping down as the month progressed, uh, and it's they're all kind of roughly around the seven hour mark. Uh, okay, nice. Um, and how have you been picking your route? Are you just kind of going out and winging it, or do you have a route set up? Have you been doing the same route? What's it look like? So um, it's all variations of the same route every day. Uh, the base, it basically starts with heading West on, um, Washington Valley road. Um, and then, you know, riding on kind of hooking back and riding on 202. Um, then eventually I get sort of by Mars town and I'll turn around and go back along the same route. So that, that's kind of the core. And then depending on the day, I'll sort of branch off of that and explore a little bit. Um, but um, honestly, the, the one of the main impetuses for me selecting that core route is there's um, plenty of places to stop and, you know, use the restroom. I was going <laughs> to ask about that. That was on my... Uh... <laughs> It was on my list. That's a that's a tough one with the hundred miles. Like, you know, yeah, especially when you're it, leaving that early in the morning. Like, let's let's be real here. <laughs> well, I was fortunate enough to find a couple of parks. Um, you know, some of them have like the no touch restrooms. Uh, yeah, everything everything's motion, so I don't have to touch anything. Uh, I carry a little. Uh, bottle of hand sanitizer with me so if i find myself you know using a, a porta potty in a park or something like that somewhere i can sanitize myself afterwards uh, and uh of course there's plenty of secluded wooded areas too <laughs> yep 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 very important that's how i choose most of my running routes uh completely understand <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, have you yeah, had a, sure. <laughs> okay. So then now that we're, now that we're just diving into that topic, uh, I know we mentioned chamois cream before, but how's that whole saddle, a uh, hundred miles a day situation been? Um, manageable. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you know, um, well, I guess, as you said, let's just dive right in, shall we? <laughs> let's do, I literally wrote a book on this. It's kind of my my jam. <laughs> All right, right on. So, um, you know, fortunately, I've never, it's never gone to, like, full-blown saddle sores. Okay. Uh, Knock on wood, it, you've it, still got three rides. Yeah, yeah, okay. Fine, uh, there we go. I just knocked on some wood. We're good. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's just been kind of this rash that I've been able to manage. So it hasn't gotten any worse, but it hasn't gone away. Um, I've been using as my chamois cream, it's, it's called Okolay stuff. Um, if what you may or may not be familiar with, it's like, uh, kind of like the consistency of aquaphor. So it's pretty thick, but it has, you know, like aloe and, and tea tree oil and, you know, all that good stuff in there. So it, it's, it's been really good at, um, during the rides, I guess, keeping it and keeping 
the rash from getting any worse and turning into saddle sores. Um, and then at night, I've actually been applying a uh, diaper rash cream, um, which uh, has been working really well. So, uh, so you're so getting yeah, through it. You know, you're making it. Yeah, I'm getting through it. it. It's it's not super comfortable, but it's it's been, you know, it, it, I I find ways to ignore it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it, it honestly, it sounds like that's just a lot of like, it's a little bit of friction and a little bit of heat rash because I mean, I, I know from my family that July in New Jersey has been brutally hot. So how are you dealing yeah. with the heat conditions? I mean, I know we mentioned the hydration pack. Are you freezing the water at all in the pack or in your bottles? And even, even with like four and a half, five liters of water, how are you getting through the day? That's just, it's a lot of sun exposure. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's um, well, that was sort of part of the impetus of waking up so early. Uh, the hope being that most of the ride would be in temperatures that are bearable. And then it would only be like the last maybe hour or two where it would just be stupidly hot. Um, but uh, but I've been pretty fortunate to get home like just before the very high temperatures of the day hit. Um, you know, <laughs> which isn't a huge improvement. It's just like, it's like 92 or 93 instead of 98. <laughs> yeah, great. Yay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's just drinking tons of water. Um, you know, it, it's, yeah, you're right. It's been really hot. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm going through my hydration pack and, a bottle and a half and I'm only stopping to pee like twice. Um, so it's just going right through me. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I had, I, I washed my hydration pack the other day cause I was like, this thing is disgusting. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Like every two runs I have to wash mine at this point cause it gets, it gets gross. Not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, uh, it, it's uh but it, it hasn't i guess it hasn't been terrible you know i don't know if if i've just gotten acclimated to it over the course of the month um you know yeah i've just kind of gotten used to sweating my face off i guess i don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. you're not even gonna know what to do with yourself next week yeah i was thinking about that today actually like you know, in a couple of days, I'm going to have, I'm going to wake up and not have to do a century. It's going to be weird. Yeah. <laughs> do you, and I, I want to come back to that, but I want to, I want to keep finishing out your day here. So when you do get home, w walk me through how you're recovering and getting ready for the next day. Um, so it starts with, uh, <laughs> I was I was I was thinking about the cone heads there for a second. Just consume mass quantities. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it it starts with um, something to eat. So uh, that is usually in the form of uh, I try to just get carbs and protein in. Um, so like, you know, I'll make a little omelet and, and have a couple slices of bread or uh, some days it's simply just uh, a PB and J with a massive amount of peanut butter. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, basic stuff like that, trying to cover the carb and protein bases. Um, Although I'm, I'm just going to stop and say, please tell me you're getting out of your bike shorts first as soon as you get oh, home. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Just, just oh, needed yeah. That's, to that's the first thing to go. Okay, that's like my PSA to people is like if you're not getting out of your bike shorts okay, as soon yeah. as you walk inside, then there there's a problem. We need to talk. Yeah, um that's definitely happening. And I guess that's a good thing about coming back to home too is like clothing's optional. A hundred percent. I wish more I think yeah. if people would be willing to just like walk around in the buff for a few hours after their rides, there'd be a lot less saddle sore issues. Yeah, putting putting totally. that on the record right now. 
<laughs> All right. Sure. So, so I, uh, you've you've had your naked omelet. What's uh, what's next? <laughs> I'm loving this conversation, so, by the way. <laughs> this is great. Um, so uh, yeah, after naked omelet, um, usually comes shower. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be stewing in myself. Uh, for very long. Um, then, uh, then after that, it's, you know, it's kind of different from day to day. I mean, I don't do anything fancy. I don't have any like, um, recovery regimen or anything like that. Uh, every once in a while I'll do a bath, um, just to kind of soak my legs and, you know, it's kind of a, a lukewarm bath, I guess. Um, which, uh, which seems to help. Um, but other than that, sometimes it's just like uh, sitting on the couch and having a cup of coffee or, uh, you know, taking a little nap or, you know, nothing really, uh, no set regimen, I guess. Um, you know, uh, I'm not putting my legs in like uh, those ice wraps or whatever or anything like that. <laughs> um, so, you know, eat food, put legs up, uh, and, and clean self. <laughs> yep. Yep. I like it. Uh, what about sleep? Do you find that you've just been going to bed earlier and earlier and earlier, or are you just kind of back to normal, like feeling okay on normal sleep? Um, well, I, I, I haven't really, honestly, I haven't really slept very well since my dad died. Um, you know, it, it's, it's been a struggle of mine ever since, but, um, I think I'm at a point doing this that, you know, I'm just so tired. I've actually been sleeping halfway decently. Um, you know, emphasis on halfway decently. Sometimes I still wake up in the middle of the night and, you know, have trouble falling back asleep or whatever. Um, but uh, for the most part, you know, I'm going to bed at like eight ish every day. Um, and uh, yeah, alarm goes off at quarter to four. So. <laughs> Still, yeah, I was going to be like, oh, wow, it's early. And then I was like, that's actually not that early when you're getting up at 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I guess nothing special there either, really. Yeah. And have you, it sounds like you've probably lucked out mechanical wise, any flats or anything like that this whole time? Um, I got a couple of flats. Yeah. I've got, um, I got one, a couple of days in, um, which contributed to that first week kind of sucking a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, there's this uh, there's this hill on Washington Valley Road that uh, that I call Glass Hill because it seems to be where everybody throws their glass. I don't know why some sort of phenomenon there, but it's the and uh, that's where I picked up the piece of glass that one time. The second time I got a flat was actually at home. Um, at the 1500 mile mark, I decided to rotate my tires and, uh, after reinflating them, uh, you know, one of them just went flat and oh, <laughs> like I was trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, sure enough, there was a little staple, uh, like half a staple stuck into, in the tire. I'm actually glad it happened at home because if, if it didn't, it probably would have happened out on the road. Um, so, you know, that was flat number two. Um, hopefully no more, but yeah, other, other than that, uh, the bike, it, I mean, I have it set up for cross, so it's just, it's, it's, I built it to be reliable. <laughs> um, uh, one by mechanical drivetrain and mechanical brakes, uh, because I don't know how to bleed hydraulic brakes, but I, I figure I can change a brake cable pretty quickly. <laughs> Fair um, enough. Yep. So, Smart. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, the bike is, uh, 
has been um, has been great. Uh, no no trouble other than a couple of flats really. Um, I'm gonna knock on wood again. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I'm knocking on wood for you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Much appreciated. <laughs> yeah. Now, if it hadn't been COVID times, would you be doing more of these rides like with friends, or have you? I I'm guessing you've done all of them solo, or am I wrong there? I've saved for a portion of one ride. I've done every ride solo. Um, I had a friend of mine come out um, and he joined me for a very small section uh, of one of my rides. But other than that, other than that, like hour, um, <laughs> every ride has been solo. Um, I, I really hate the fact that I can't invite people to ride with me. You know, it, it sucks. Uh, I would love to have company. I would love to, you know, uh, turn every day into a group ride. And, but it's, it's just, it's just not wise. Uh, I, I personally believe it's not wise. I see a lot of group rides when I'm riding. Um, I don't like seeing it. It's, it just doesn't seem responsible to me right now, but, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be the guy that's like, Hey, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you can make the decision to not do it yourself. Exactly. You know, uh, I'm going to do what I feel is right. If people disagree, that's fine. Just, you know, don't rope me into it. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think what I've appreciated, I've talked to another person who actually just did a bike packing trip with a couple friends, but like they basically came up with their own protocols before they left on the trip. And it was like they quarantined for two weeks. They like oh, cool. did temperature checks. Like they really like, did all of these like they decided on what made them comfortable as like a group of like four guys and you know followed those like rules and regulations that they set out and i was like i i appreciate that so i i really yeah. appreciate everyone kind of figuring out like a responsible thing that works for them so i think yeah totally. you, you made the right call for you know where you are and what's going on and i think that's great um Okay. Yeah, I'm so, trying. <laughs> <laughs> so as you're coming into these these final days, what advice would you give yourself if you could go back and like help out Anthony who's having a rough go in that first week? Wow, that's a good one. Um uh, and it can be as deep as like, uh, there we go. I was going to say it could be like super deep and philosophical. Or it could be like eat another snack or something. So <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, you know, that's a good one. Um, I think with, with attempts like this, you have to go through some like struggles for it to really feel like you did something there, right? Like if every, if you got on this call and you were like, every day has been magical and wonderful and beautiful and like a total breeze and no issues, <laughs> like, would that really feel quite as accomplished? Would you really feel like you, you know, re you really did the thing? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's. It I agree. If if it would if it was all you know sunshine and rainbows, it wouldn't be anything special. Yeah, then um, you'd have to go out and do double centuries every day in August to to make it difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like all right, let's kick this up a notch. <laughs> but um, you know, yeah, I, I it there there's definitely been a couple times where I wanted to quit. Honestly, you know. Uh, there's emotionally, I hit that point a couple of times, um, because, you know, I, I guess it's kind of that, that post-traumatic stress where, you know, you lose someone close to you and you start reliving those final moments and it just goes, it's like this whirlwind in your head of repeating over and over again. And, and, you know, um, that, yeah that was really rough. And, and you know, I, I, I've been wearing my dad's necklace, um, the entire time that I've been doing this. And, and, uh, sometimes when I get out of the saddle, like I can hear the pendants kind of jangling around. Uh, um, and, and like a couple of times that sort of started that whirlwind going, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I, I honestly uh, so, can't even imagine. Yeah, it, it's there. So emotionally, there's definitely been some really rough spots, and and uh, you know, physically too. Um, there's like, you know, there there were a couple days where it's you feel like you've got cinder blocks on your feet, and and it's every pedal stroke is is you're fighting for it, yeah. and uh, you know, I got through those days just by taking a lot of breaks. <laughs> you know, pulling over frequently and, and just like, all right, you know, let's, let's go a little further and then pull over and okay, let's go a little further and then pull over. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely had some, some pretty rough spots, um, you know, uh, but other, otherwise, um, not, not too bad. Funny, I was about to be Lately. like, "Ah, oh, when it's when it's over, are you gonna like get a massage or anything like that?" And then I was like, "Ah, oh, man, you can't even really do that right now. That sucks." Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's so <laughs> disappointing. That. That would be awesome. You know, you get a nice sports massage or something like that. But yeah, I can't really do that. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and okay, so for someone who's hearing this and you know maybe is not like I'm gonna go ride a century every day for next month, but is like, oh, that sounds cool. I'd love to plan some kind of like adventure like this. Any any advice on how to choose something that's like a big goal, maybe even a scary goal, but like it's still within your your doable range? Like, did you ever quest like as you were setting this goal, did you ever question whether or not you'd be able to do it? Um, I, I think I questioned it, you know, even after I started, <laughs> I feel like I questioned uh, it more after I started than I would have like before I started it though. Um, yeah, if that makes you're, sense. You're, <laughs> no, totally. You're absolutely right. I think that was, you know, I, cause going into this, it was like, yeah, I've done centuries before. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> did it the one time um, i can totally do it 30 more times after that <laughs> yeah i know it sounds pretty silly now right um but uh, i mean you're but, talking to the person who actually would be like yeah that's totally reasonable let's go do that so <laughs> um but yeah i mean if if i was to give somebody advice uh, as to you know uh, how to prepare for something like this is like pick a I guess for me it was like pick pick a goal that seems just beyond reach if that makes any yeah, sense yeah now I love that uh, you know like if it if it instills doubt right before you start it that's good that means it's something that's <laughs> you know, it, it, it's something worth working towards and, and, and trying to achieve. If, I don't know, I feel like it's less exciting if you're going into it like, yeah, I got this, you know, this is in the bag. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it adds, maybe, I don't know, maybe it sounds corny, but maybe it adds an element of adventure to it if you don't know if you're going to make it. <laughs> I think that's super important. I think like if you just if you go into everything knowing it's you're going to finish and it's going to be fine like you're not pushing your limits enough. Totally. Yeah, that's that's I think that's a better way to put it, you know. It, uh, that that pushing of the limit is is really where at the end I think you get the most accomplishment uh, or feeling of accomplishment. Um but uh you know, I would just tell people like, you know, make sure make sure your bike's comfortable um and invest in good quality gear that you know uh, test said gear as well make sure that you like it <laughs> um it, it's but at the end of the day it comes down to you and and uh you know uh, prep work uh prep work is huge um you know scout routes and and find you know find the route that has restrooms you know <laughs> stuff like that um but uh no i love that yeah yeah awesome well before we wrap up tell everyone how they can uh how they can 
follow well you'll be done by the time this goes up but how they can still help you out with the fundraising that you're doing because you know in addition to doing this thing to sort of honor your father you're also raising money so how can people how can people help give back to leave it on the road uh well um the if people want to uh go to my instagram page um i have a link going to a facebook fundraiser uh, which is kind of cool because you can kind of see how much money has been raised and all that. Um, uh, so my Instagram handle is a Costa C O S T A rides bikes. Um, so, you know, people can find me on Instagram and donate through the link in my bio, uh, or, um, just go to leave on the road.com. That's, that's probably the easiest way to do it. They have an excellent website that kind of explains, you know, the whole mantra and, and, uh, you know, why myself and everybody involved with Leave on the Road does what we do. Um, and, you know, you can donate there. And uh, if you want to get something back for your donation, they have um, stuff that you can purchase and the proceeds uh, from that goes to, uh, you know, cancer treatment, development and research and all that. So, you know, um, there's a couple avenues to do it, uh, but uh, there's my face. So I guess to summarize, my Facebook fundraiser and uh, leave it on the road dot com. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> no, I love it. And everyone should check out your Instagram anyway to just, you know, see what this whole trip has looked like. It's been really fun kind of watching it these last couple of weeks. So I'm so excited for you with these last couple hundred miles to go. You're you're like in the clear now. I mean, knock again. I just feel like I'm knocking on wood yeah. so much in this episode, but you're you're <laughs> almost there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, thank you. It, it it's been a long road for sure, you know, and, and uh, 300 miles to go. Um, I've actually, you know, if anybody lives in this area, I, I've made arrangements for the last day to be in a local park, uh, Warren Echo Park, if you're familiar. Um, so I'm going to do the hundred miles in that park. And then it, it's a big enough park where people can do social distancing etiquette and stuff like that and be safe. And so if anybody wants to come out and watch that, uh, although this is probably going to air afterwards, so I might be wasting my breath. <laughs> Still a cool park to check out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I just realized that as I was talking, yeah, this, Hey, uh, that's, you've that's had a long be... day, sir. You've had a long month. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. Well, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat. I know it's almost your bedtime, so I should let you go and get to that. <laughs> and yeah, good good luck for these last couple of rides. It was and uh yeah, maybe maybe when I finally make it back to New Jersey, uh we can we can actually hopefully maybe hey, during cross season, maybe we'll have a cross season and could maybe we'll have a cross season. Could hop into a race. Phenomenal. Otherwise, we'll see um, cyclocross New Jersey 2021, which yeah, is probably sure. more likely. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. This has been amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad uh, that we could make this happen. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Consummate Athlete Podcast. While you still have your podcast app open, do us a huge favor, head over to iTunes or whatever app you're listening in and rate and review the podcast. It's super helpful. It, you know, gets us more guests on the show. It gets me a dog. Um, and it's just, you know, a good way to give back if we've provided any kind of value to you throughout all of the episodes you've listened to. If you're looking for the show notes, you can find those at www.consummateathlete.com. We have lots of other content over there and any information about coaching or events can also be found at that same website. And you can find us on the social medias at Molly J. Herford and at Peter Glassford on Twitter and Instagram. And we would love to hear from you. Thanks so much. And we will see you next week. Wow. What an episode. That was amazing. When that one person said that thing and then the other person totally like Set them straight. Oh, man, that was great. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that again. But hey, since I have your attention now, hello, Cyclocross friends, new friends and old friends and soon to be friends. My name's Bill. I host a, another show on the Wide Angle Podium podcast network. It's called Cyclocross Radio, and we talk to the biggest stars in cyclocross and even the medium stars in cyclocross and some of the soon-to-be stars in cyclocross. 
We also have a panel discussion we call the Media Pit with my buddy Zach and Michael, where we go over all of the new rules that might be coming out and the calendar situations and races that happen. It's a great time. It's a great conversation. We built an amazing community that we want you to be part of. So go to wideanglepodium.com, become a member there, then go to your favorite podcast app and subscribe to Cyclocross Radio. Do it. Do it now. Cyclocross friends. <laughs>